Okay, so now the only thing left to do is actually do the quilting. And the quilting um, is when you bring the layers of fabric, the top, the bottom, and the batting. And that's quilting. That's what changes this from a simple blanket to a quilt. And so what I've already gone and done is taken a quilting guide, and it's just a little piece of metal that you can slide in and out of the little slot in your prepper foot. And I have set it at one inch. And I've changed my pressure, presser foot from the quarter inch quilting foot over to an all purpose, which has um, the spot for the quilting guide. And I was going to use a walking foot, which would give you even feed from the front and back. And you can see it has teeth in the front, um, but it doesn't have a spot for my quilting guide, which I didn't know until just now, which is fine, you know, no big deal. So all you do is you feed in your fabric. And what I have already gone and done is set my machine to a wobble stitch. And what is a wobble stitch? It is a very slight zigzag because it's kind of difficult, especially if you're just starting out to sew a perfectly straight line along um, the markings that you've created for your guide. And if you do it with this slight zigzag stitch, um, it kind of masks any little variations in your stitch guide. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and set my needle down and start out with a back stitch. And I'm just going to sew along from those guidelines we made earlier, from one corner to the other. And just make sure that you're not getting all caught up in that little guide. Sometimes it happens. Accidents happen. There now, it should feed nice and evenly. And I like to just have the fabric on my arms ready to feed into the machine. Um, just it makes it feed a lot evenly, more evenly. Roll up the side so that it can pass through machi the machine. Nice. Smooth everything out as you're going. All right, and back stitch. And remove that. And now you'll just go and sew along the other line. And it's important to sew these two first before you start uh, sewing up your grid, just because it will make things easier in the long run to begin with these two. And you'll see why in a second. So just make sure everything's going nicely. Back stitch at the beginning and end. I see it's getting caught up on that a little bit, so just fix it. All right, so now you've sewn the first two lines of your grid. And you can see Nice, and everything's held in place. And look and make sure that there aren't any wrinkles in the front or the back, because if there are, and they're very serious, you'll want to rip out the entire line and fix it. But it looks like everything's going okay. And now, here's where this metal bar comes in. What you do is you will drop down your presser foot, drop in your needle, and you will keep your eye on the already sewn seam and that metal bar. You won't watch the needle, you'll just Make sure that that with the metal bar. Back stitch. All right, and that is all you do. Make sure that you completed the stitch before you pull it out, and you can see what's going to happen. So to continue on with the quilt, you would just continue on following line after line after line and then when you've completed this side you would flip it over and sew line after line after line and that will uh, make your grid and that will quilt the entire thing and that's what I'm going to do and then I'll be right back for the last step which is putting on the seam binding. So I'll be right back after I sew this all up. So now that you have quilted everything and it's all done and you've gone through and inspected and made sure everything looks good. The last thing you want to do is now you finally go around with your shears and you give it one 
final trimming because you need a very nice smooth edge for the last step. So you just go around and trim and at this point if the fabric wasn't perfectly aligned you go ahead and trim it away. All right and now the last and final step is to finish the edge with some bias tape <clears throat> which is easily bought, easily made. Um, I just made this pink bias tape, I think you saw me, and um, all you do is go, and sometimes it's easier just to trim a little bit of the end off so you wind up with a nice pressed piece, and then you just go around and wrap this on the edge. And you will carefully pin it because when you go through and sew, you want to make sure that you catch both sides with your stitch. So now I think I'm just going to go ahead and trim. See, I missed a spot right here. Because if the bias tape isn't wide enough, it won't cover the entire edge. And that's never good. But now you should be fine. And the most important part is just to take your time when doing this part because, like I said, it's very agitating to turn it to sew around the entire thing and then only to find out that you've missed a spot. And it happens. It's happened to me more than once. Now, as you come around to the beginning with the end of the bias tape, you simply trim it off, take out. Well, you can keep it pinned, but you'll fold over the edge just to cover all the raw threads. And you'll come over and you will just wrap it. And you can pin it in place. Take out that pin. And there you go. So now you have this blanket covered with pins, so you want to be really careful right now, and all the edges are covered with the bias tape, and now all you do, and I'm just going to take out my quilting guide, is sew it up. So you're going to go over to your machine, and I never start exactly on a corner, and I try and go somewhere in the middle, or close to a corner, but never on a corner, they're kind of difficult. I'll just drop my needle. You pull out a pin and you go slowly now because there are lots of pins in here and you don't want to get anything stuck in your machine because that wouldn't be good right now. So just sew up. Make sure I'm back stitch at the beginning. You pull your pins out as you need. And I'm just sewing right in the middle of the bias tape and I'm hoping, I'm praying that it's going to catch both sides because um, it's just, it's so annoying if it doesn't. But if you've pinned it well, it should. As you come around to a corner, be careful, just go slowly and make sure you have supported the quilt. But you can hand crank it even but I think we'll be okay. Just make sure before you lift your presser foot that you have your needle in the fabric. You can pivot around. There you have it, a quilt you made yourself. Then just go around and make sure if there are any spots that you accidentally missed with this bias tape. You want to go around and make sure that you sew them down and secure them. But for the most part, it looks pretty good. And I'll make sure I show you a really good picture when I trim everything up. So I hope this helped, and Emily, I hope this gives you some inspiration to maybe start a quilt of your own. Thanks.